Hi, everybody. I'm Tiana Roebuck. I'm the Associate Curator of Studio Programming and Learning at the Art Gallery of Ontario. Um, even though we're coming to you from home today, I do want to acknowledge that the Art Gallery of Ontario operates on land that is the territory of the Anishinaabe, the Mississauga Nation, and also the territory of the Wendat and the Haudenosaunee. Uh, this program today is part of Ajo Make Summer Edition, a really exciting program. It's uh, four weeks long, it's all free, it's on our website, and we bring you exciting art projects, we bring you uh, art demonstrations, activities, videos, live conversations, just like this one, and uh, we're going to introduce you to our art collection and inspire you to be creative and make art at home. So this week, um, I am thrilled for Ajo Make Summer Edition, um, our theme is found. Uh, we're making art with all the things that we can find around us and uh, today we're going to learn how to make art using sound. So our special guest today is uh, the awesome singer, songwriter, uh, composer and educator Laura Barrett. Uh, I know Laura because she's taught uh, sound art courses for children and youth at the AGO. Uh, she's also taught uh, many courses for us and uh, she's taught in our summer camp program as well which is always uh, the best time of the year, the most magical time of the year. So I'm totally thrilled to have her here today and I can't wait to make sounds together. Um, it's going to be great. So two quick things just before we start. Um, Laura is going to be doing some sound and art demonstrations. So if you have paper, pen, marker, you might want to grab something and have it ready. Uh, and also we'll have a QA and a uh, open so we can see your questions as they come in and we'll do our best to answer uh, as they come along. So welcome, Laura. I'm so glad that you're here today. And uh, please tell us a bit about yourself and about what kind of art that you make. Okay, thank you so much for having me. This is very exciting. Um, and the fact that I can do it from the comfort of my own home is pretty sweet. Um, so I prepared a little uh, slightly indulgent presentation um, to tell you a little bit about myself. And here it is right about now. So. Um, yes, as you mentioned, I'm a singer, songwriter, and composer and teacher, and um, this is a little selection of photos from the last 15 years or so um, as I've performed and toured um, playing music as a solo act and in a couple of bands. Um, then after that, I pivoted and I went back to school, got my Master's of Teaching from OISE, and then taught a bunch of emoji heads. Um, I love teaching. I work with the TDSB as an occasional teacher and um, really keeps me on my toes. I'm always learning so much from the kids that I'm supposedly teaching. And uh, after that, um, still teaching, I went to the Canadian Film Center and I did a year long residency there as one of the um, composers in residence through the Slate Family Program. And that was incredible because it gave me a lot of resources and information in the film composition world. And I also met some wonderful people who are still in my life today because we went through such a great experience together. Uh, so we don't feel like competitors. Um, and here is just a selection of some other projects. These are films that I've scored. Uh, Porch Stories, I was also one of the leads in. And over on the right there, you see me scoring a short film called Aaron's Guide to Kissing Girls. And um, I just have a lot of fun. Uh, just to explain what scoring a film is, the film's already been shot and directed and everything, but right at the end, you get to add music and heighten the emotional content of the movie and bring it to life even more. So that's what I've been doing for the last few years, um, including this most recent piece. It's a documentary about the Honest Ed's Mervish Village redevelopment. And you can see there a quick shot of what it looks like when I'm scoring a film we we did a lot of work via zoom <laughs> but uh, you can see all the different tracks and different instruments that i'm syncing up with the film um, this was just a short little slide to show my connection to honest eds because i also participated in an interdisciplinary art project where we reconstructed parts of the sign and my albums you can check them out if you're interested they're online you can find them and 
and my work with the AGO, which has been so exciting for the last three years, um, teaching workshops and summer camps. So uh, I'll leave it on that. Awesome. Awesome. I do have to say, um, and I know, Laura, I've mentioned the, uh, you know, this to you before. So you've taught in our courses, you've taught in our camps, and, and whenever I've mentioned that you teach with us, you know, people who know your music are always like, ooh, Laura Barrett's teaching <laughs> your classes. And I was always a little embarrassed because I hadn't heard your music before. I hadn't listened to an album before. And then last summer, I picked up your most recent um, album and listened to it. And it became my album of the summer. It, I listened to it every day on the way to work, <laughs> every day after work. It was, yeah, so I'm, I'm a, a big fan of your music. So I yeah, highly recommend people checking it out. Um, I know for today, sort of, uh, we're here to talk about sound and art and how those things combine together. So um, sound isn't always the most obvious choice when it comes to art making, right? Most people think, oh, I'll grab some paint or I'll grab some markers. Um, you know, do I have paper? Great, I can make art. But really the idea is if you um, listen to the sounds around you or can make sounds, you can make beautiful uh, art at home with just the things that you find have. So it's really great. It's really great for art uh, this week at sound. Because, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're going to explore this together because I think a lot of people don't know about it. So I'm going to show you two quick images. Um, there are two different pieces in our collection that use sound and art in different ways. So I'm going to share uh, them with you. Let's see what you guys think. Because I really like them both, but they're quite different. So this one um, is an example of a piece that's called Summer Sound by Gershon Iskowitz. And it's a piece where this artist was listening to the summer sounds that are around them and then thought, how do I capture that visually? So they had oil paint and they had a canvas. And I don't know, for me, um, when I look at this one, um, I think of a, maybe a creek or a riverbed, or I think of um, a big, beautiful tree sort of growing in the middle of a field. And they thought, great, I can hear all of those things in the summer. How do I capture it visually? Um, the next one, and I should ask, can you see these images okay? Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Okay, great. So this one is by, um, and that first one was a Canadian artist. This one's by Janet Cardiff, also a Canadian artist uh, called Whispering Room. And uh, this is totally different. So Janet Cardiff decided to use sound as the medium, as the material that she was going to make her art with. So um, this is a piece where you walk around the room and you can see all those different speakers in the image. And as you walk around, you can hear different parts of a story coming out of different speakers. So as you travel through the room, Room, um, you get to sort of piece together a story. Um, so totally different way to use sound and art um, together. So I'm going to go out of there and then ask you, so Laura, thinking about sound and art, what can we do today with the people who are with us to make some sound and art together? Well, we are going to be going back and forth between the worlds of sound and art. And it's funny, there was a little Q in the Q&A about Wood Between Worlds, uh, which is <laughs> based on the place in the Chronicles of Narnia. But I'll connect <laughs> that to today's workshop because sound and art are very much connected, even if we might not think so right away. Um, so for this, um, we're going to be ultimately using some things we have around the house and using our voice and our bodies to make sound. Um, but first of all, I wanted to give a kind of one minute physics lesson on what sound even is. So sound is created when things vibrate and that could be your vocal cords or it could be an elastic band. And so uh, this vibrates, particles in the air beside it start vibrating. And I like to think of it as a bit of a dance because these same particles aren't moving all the way to your ears but they're sending that dance in a sound wave. So the energy gets to your ears and then ultimately tells your brain, oh, sound. And depending on how fast or slow things are vibrating, they are maybe a higher, they, they will be a higher note or a lower note. So ah, my vocal cords are vibrating very quickly. And then uh, they're not vibrating as quickly. It's a low note. Um, 
And there's a really fun way we can actually see sound. And Tiana, I think you have it all set up for us. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. So it cool. you, when I'm making sound, we see it right there on the screen. And one fun thing that I noticed, so when I'm talking, you're seeing lots of different frequencies all resonating and even one note with a vibrato. You can see many different frequencies, but if you whistle or if you're listening to bird song, a lot of the time that's actually just one note. So Tiana, maybe we can try a little bit of whistling. So let's see if it gets me Oh, it looks like it's catching me. Yeah, so sure. Do you want to whistle together? Yeah, let's try it. You go for it. I guess you might be a little quiet in the feed there. But yeah, lots of different sounds. Um, cool. Some sounds take over all the frequencies at once, like static. Anyway, that's a really fun thing to experiment with at home, and I love the way it looks. And you can also see the intensity, so the colors are telling us how loud sounds are. So if they're very quiet, they're barely going to show up at all. But if I speak louder, then it's more active, and we even hit reds and yellows over there. Love it. That's so cool. So that's a really good example of the literal visual representation of sound which is, yeah, very cool to see, definitely worth seeing. Um, and then I just wanted to talk about the fact that, so we just did, we're talking, and talking uses lots of different kinds of sounds. Um, we can also use our hands and make all kinds of sonic textures that way, like. All kinds of different sounds. And we can use things around the house, um, you can, Bring out an elastic band. Or maybe even a glass. That's all up there in the higher frequencies. What about can of spaghetti sauce? And my favorite is and be careful when you're recording sounds involving water near any kind of electronics there's a little bit of water in this metal bowl and i just want to show you what this looks like so you can see that the sound was going up and down in a wobbly kind of way i love this i love this visualizer very cool yeah very very cool i could see myself playing with this for hours at home <laughs> So even if you don't have instruments at home, because um, sound art is, is accessible to all of us, uh, we can use just our own bodies, um, or you can use something that I, I hope most of you have around the house, which is just a sheet of paper. And uh, when I was teaching sound art classes, usually one of the first things I would do is go around the room and we'd see how many sounds we could make from a single piece of paper without repeating. So Tiana, do you have any paper with you? I've got a big sheet. <laughs> right okay, so why don't you try and make a sound and we're gonna listen at home and, and notice, is it a, a slow sound, a fast sound, a high pitched sound? Um, and what kind of sound is it? So what's your first sound? Yes. Can you? Uh, I'll do that again too. Ripping. Ooh, that sounded good. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try crumpling. What's another sound we could do? Uh, yeah. Then that sounds like something waving in the in the wind. Um, I'm just gonna try a little. This is kind of cheating because I'm using my own voice too, but. I sound a bit different when I'm talking through this, this pipe. <laughs> um, so That's great. A single sheet of paper you can make. I bet at home people are making even more sounds because uh, you, can, you can rattle, uh, not rattle it. You can scratch it. You can fold it. Um, 
all kinds of sense from a single sheet of paper. So I wanted to pivot a little from this uh, spectrogram, if we can. And I'm going to show everyone at home some examples of compositions that were actually, so a lot of the time when I, when I talk about sheet music or notation, that's a way of writing down music so that others can play it later on. Um, so sometimes it looks like this and you've got lots of notes and they are read in a certain order, left to right. Um, notes that are higher on the page are higher pitched, but there are other ways of, of making pictures from sound and showing people how to play pieces. So I'm going to share that with us now. Um, and what did you call this? You called it graphic notation? Graphic notation. And Very cool. Voila. <laughs> so um, there are many, many different ways. You don't need a music degree to write graphic notation and have somebody play a piece. In fact, sometimes with this piece called Strip City by Kathy Barbarian, it might even look more like a comic strip than sheet music in the traditional sense. So there are a couple of examples. Um, Kathy Barbarian wrote this piece for a solo voice and she performed it. And you've got to look her up later and watch some videos because it's hilarious. She's just so expressive and it kind of blew my mind a bit because it, it went past my idea of what music sounds like. This piece is wonderful. I just discovered it recently and Tiana, I'm wondering if you might like to join me in a performance of this this one part. How could I say no, Laura? How could I say no? For sure, you tell me what you want me to do and I'm there. Okay, I think I'm gonna play the, um, the cat sounds and then maybe if you can give us some of the dog noises um, and then we, we can look at this piece. I think it goes left to right. There's a scuffle uh, that we're both involved in and then I don't know, what do you think happens at the end? I know we're gonna see when we do it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Meow, 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 <laughs> the end. I think we can we can bow here. <laughs> so I don't know if people knew what they were signing up for. <laughs> <laughs> This is so much fun to try to do this at home. It's great. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And so graphic notation can look like all kinds of different things. I have two more examples very quickly to show you. Uh, this next piece is called Ornamentic by Tom Phillips. And this was actually a trombone player came to Tom Phillips and asked if he could write a piece that would show the trombonist how to use their instrument in a new way and so he came up with these um, little ornaments and I'm looking at them and I have no clue uh, how I might play them but that trombonist apparently was was happy with it um, and you can play this as a solo uh, instrument or with an ensemble so I love how graphic this is it looks like diagrams of tools or parts interlocking. Um, and I think it's just beautiful. So maybe at home you could try and figure out a way, how could I sing that? How could I play it on an instrument that I have? Um, how could I act it out? And then this last one, Articulation by Georg Ligeti. Um, this one I just love for the, the colors involved and the shapes and uh, the way I think it translates different instrument families into different uh, colors and patterns. And you can, you can see there is a marking of time below, but then there's something happening above with the circles. I really don't know how to interpret this one, uh, but I think it's quite magical. So those are just some examples of graphic notation and uh, translating sound into pictures, which is what I would love for us to try um, coming up next. And you just made me think of something, Laura. Um, when you showed us the book of music, like you showed us the sheet music that you have, right? There's kind of only one 
I don't say there's one way to play that, but there kind of is, right? There's a very traditional way you look at that music and play it. And when you just showed that last image, I was like, oh yeah, if you don't really know how to play it and I don't really know how to play it, then the way we tackle it and do it, it's gonna be so different, which is kind of the fun of all of this, right? Especially with graphic notation, every time you do it, it's gonna be totally different depending on who you are and what you bring to it. So yeah, I'm very excited for whatever you're gonna have us do, do next. Okay, well, I've prepared two soundscapes, and a soundscape can be anything. Um, it can, it, I designed the first soundscape using just materials I have at home. Oh yeah, I did wanna share that. I'm just gonna share a little picture of what I've got going on on this table. So one second here, um, just very quickly, I'm gonna share my screen here. So again, working with what we have. You can see that okay? Yep, that looks great. I've got a bunch of things here, mainly sourced from the kitchen. <laughs> and um, basically, no instruments, no problem, is my philosophy. And I'm going to take one of them. So this bottle, you can do a lot of things with a single object. So I could ding it with a spoon different parts of the instrument will give me a different sound. And I can also play it like a, a pan flute. Oh. Get a really <laughs> resonant sound. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> um, if you don't have shakers or maracas, I literally have salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> so the peppercorns are making a different sound than the salt, that's pretty subtle. So you can assemble your own little orchestra of household objects. And um, I used those to make the next soundscape that we are going to hear. And what Tiana and I are going to do, and everybody at home can try as well, if you've got paper, if you've got markers or crayons or pencil crayons or whatever, um, think about we saw how sound translates literally into an image, but you don't have to go literal. So think about what colors you're hearing or um, shapes that kind of suggest themselves to you. Or uh, maybe there's a really strong note or sound and you want it to be thicker on the page, or maybe there's a pattern that you want to show in a shape. So I've got my colors out. This first soundscape was made using just things I found around the house and my own body and, and mouth. I am ready. I am excited. Let's try to draw your soundscape. <laughs> Let's try this. was a journey. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, uh, what did you, how did you interpret that visually? Um, whoa, that was wild. Yeah, my arms got a workout. Okay, so I, there was that rhythmic part at the beginning, which was really fun. And then there's that like that, whoa, which is kind of down there. And then you had like a bubble sound almost. And then something where it was like really loud clangs, like doo, doo, doo. and then you have that kind of at the end. So that, that was my, that was my interpretation. I love that. I love that. And it's interesting that you made some squares. I created something that had squares as well. Um, <laughs> with this, I was echoing the rhythmic pattern of ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 ba. So each of those ba 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 patterns, I turn into a square. And, um, then I had bubbles as well and gurgles and water. And then these orange clouds represent the shaking sounds and kind of 
it felt like a storm was brewing, so I uh, I added those. But I think ours actually look kind of similar, which is fun. Um, Not I, the expected outcome, shockingly no, similar. No, no. <laughs> um, so maybe we're on the same wavelength today. That's it, that's it. I created another soundscape that's got a very different vibe. So uh, let me get, and I'm just gonna give you a, a tiny sneak peek about it is that it's mellow. It's a bit more mellow than that one. Uh, and with this one, I used all digital instruments. So it's, um, it sounds different. <laughs> Ready. do that one for longer that was very <laughs> that was very relaxing so with this one um do you want to show yours first or do you want me to do mine you you go for it go for it so with this one um i had that that first instrument that came in was kind of descending but in a in a soft way so i didn't want to show uh bumpy straight lines i wanted to show sort of this smooth gliding and i don't know what this is and i kind of got the impression of with that lower instrument of just um a lake or a body of water and it was just kind of skirting off the surface of it somehow and then when the twinkles came in i had to draw some stars because that's what it felt like it was uh glimmering in the air so i'm curious and then the colors i went with more pastel colors because it was uh, soothing. I'm curious about what yours looks like. We're definitely on the same wavelength today. So, and I'm lucky, I pulled out some markers, some crayons and some oil pastels. So the second you said it was like a softer kind of feel, I grabbed my pastels. Um, so this one is sort of like this, that, that soft kind of swirl at the beginning and then it got a little firmer and more specific. And then there was like a whoa kind of set, which went down for me. And then it transitioned a little. And then when it got sparkly, it was sort of similar. I went into the kind of twinkly sparkles. And then there was that lovely kind of repeated sound at the end. So yeah, not very different from each other. They're quite similar. Yeah, that's really fun. I also see a cupcake or something. Yeah, I just saw that. Now maybe I'm just hungry. I'm subconsciously hungry and I need, it's almost lunchtime. I can have a cupcake, that's fine. Very sweet. You're drawing sweet. Um, so that is one way to go when you're at home, even just listening to any music or even the radio, uh, maybe talk, talking people, um, responding to sound with, with the visual art medium is a really exciting thing to do with your brain because you're basically activated in every possible way and you're translating uh, one artistic medium to another and I find that really exciting and cool and if I were to listen to the, those same pieces again I wouldn't necessarily hear the same things or interpret them the same way uh, so yeah at home if you're listening to music and you want to just draw what you hear um, it could be really fun and the last thing I guess that we're going to do today is go the other way and do something that's kind of more similar to my profession as a, a, a film composer, but we're not necessarily going to make music. Uh, we're going to do something that sometimes is, well, it's called sound foley or foley. So that is the process of adding sound in like footsteps or um, it, basically anytime you watch a TV show or a movie, and their sound, that was probably added in later. They probably filmed it without any of those sounds and then they add them in later so that they can record them in a really great room, um, a soundproof room, and 
they design all these sounds very carefully. We are going to watch a very quick video that I recorded the other day um, at Humber Bay Park. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, so it's a sh very short video. Let's watch it without sound. Okay, so, um, so what do we see there? What happened in that video, Tiana? <laughs> so it looked like there was a little ladybug sort of crawling along, minding its own business, having a good day. And then there was sort of like a, a zoom in and then a zoom out and then an even bigger kind of zoom out and a fade. Yeah, so we've got kind of three acts almost in this piece. And I'm curious to see what we can do. Um, I'll be using some of the things I have here uh, on the table to give us some sound effects for this ladybug and I'm curious maybe you could add some like body percussion or sounds with your mouth um, sounds good sounds good okay so feel the ladybug channel the ladybug <laughs> I'm going to be using a hairbrush and a spoon <laughs> okay and I'm going to use my mouth <laughs> we'll see how it goes <laughs> not bad, not bad. Not bad, not bad at all. So, I mean, that is a short demo of what you can do. But again, I recommend all of these things are things you can do at home. If you take a short video or even a part of a video that you are watching on TV and you watch it without sound, analyze what's going on and, and then give it your own sound effects or your own music if you have musical instruments or just sing it or give an internal monologue. Um, there's so much you can do with sound and pairing it with visuals. It's, it's just really fun and exciting. That's awesome. And I know um, one fun way that I've done that, I know you've done this as well, is we just looked at a video, like a short video, and you created sound. So sometimes, yeah, you can look at anything around you. You could look out your window, like maybe you can't record video. Okay, sit by your window and look at what's happening on the street and try to make the sounds using what you're just looking out the window. Or um, you could look at a favorite piece of artwork or even you could like look at somebody in your house. Like maybe you can watch them and like compose a piece of music that's just about them, like as you're watching them in the house. So there's so many different ways that you can play with, um, with sound and art. So I'm gonna give a huge, huge, huge thank you to Laura for coming today, for um, teaching us how to listen to the sounds around us, how to respond, how to make those sounds. And uh, before we wrap up, is there anything that you wanna share with folks from home? Um, well, yeah, two quick things. I just wanted to say that documentary that I recently scored, it's called There's No Place Like This Place Any Place. And it's going. It's already streamed through Hot Docs, which is great, but it will stream online from August 25th to 27th as part of the Toronto Jewish Film Festival. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, the redevelopment of Mervish Village and also hearing uh, a bunch of music, I wrote... 35 minutes of music for that film um, and I'm really proud of it so check it out and then my last thing to say would just be to listen to the world around you there's so much happening uh, even one example I really I always think of when I'm locking up my bike is if I hit my bike lock against a post or something and it kind of sproings and it vibrates I hear that all the way through my arm into my ear and it's musical. There's a musical note there. So there's music everywhere, car horns, uh, people on the street talking. Uh, and if you can tune into it, it'll just make your world that 
much richer. So that's my final little message. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. So for everyone who's watching, um, please make sure to check out uh, this week's AGO Make Summer Edition programming. It's on our website. Again, it's all about uh, found. That's our theme. So you'll find this video along with other great projects like how to build um, sculpture with your body, how to build really big and small, um, recreating artworks um, from the AGO collection using things that you find at home. And then we do have two more weeks of programming that's coming up. Um, we have some great special guests joining us, including uh, the Toronto Zoo and the Ontario Science Centre which is going to be really fun and as always anything that you make please share with us at the hashtag AGO makes and we can't wait to see it so uh, stay tuned we've got children and youth courses starting this fall as well so keep coming back to our website and seeing what we're up to so for now we'll just say thank you again Laura it was so great to do this with you today and for everyone at home have fun and play get creative and we'll see you again soon bye-bye